like, like I said, all 3D software now is pretty much the same. You know, they all have 3D cubes. They all have um, cylinders. They they all have vertices. They all have uh, edge loops. All that stuff doesn't change. So depending on what the work is you're doing in the other 3D program, most times you can probably get around it. But if you're doing anything complicated or specialist, then yeah, you really need to know the program quite well. You Trying to bluff your way through it's not a good idea. And the fact that they went bust tells me a lot. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe that, that was their problem. Maybe just weren't, um, they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> Not that all companies go bust, though. That's nothing, you know, special about a company going bust. Uh, Leg Mog says that those were desperate times. Was in a thankless retail job at the time and was desperate for any work in three D. Yeah, and I can I can understand that. Look, you do what you got to do to get a job. That's 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 fine. That's not a problem. I'm mean, I'm not judging anyone by by lying. I mean, about well, the software that they know. You know, embellish. For sure, everybody embellishes when they go for a job interview. Interviewers know that too. Uh, if a sniper is saying the time will come when I'll use Blender. Well, I've heard good things. I have heard good things. Um, but I love Max so much. Max is my little baby. I love Max. Love it. Love Max. I'll always use Max and just love it. Love the interface. Love it. Don't, don't love Autodesk as a company, but love Max. But, like I said, I've heard good things about Blender, which is, um, for a free piece of software, is uh, commendable in itself. So, because remember, Max costs a fortune, guys. If you want to buy it, it costs you, like, in Australia, to buy a Max license is about $6,000 Australian. Uh, so it's an expensive piece of software to buy. Uh, you certainly wouldn't do it unless you were making money with it. Do remember, though, that if you're a student, you can, you can get a free license for Max, regardless of where you are in the world. Uh, so if you're a student, uh, Autodesk will give you a three-year license to use Max for free. You can't use it commercially for any commercial work, but you can certainly use it for your schoolwork. Uh, Legmog says, uh, my thinking was, okay, I'm very experienced in Cinema 4D and uh, general ethos of 3D workflow, and I'm sure Max is essentially the same as Cinema 4D. Mm -hmm. So just the buttons and different places, yep, pretty much. Pretty much. And that's what I've been getting at all along. All the 3D software is pretty much the same now. It all gets the job done and, uh, you know, all 3D software uses verts, uses edge loops, uses polygons or triangles. That's all the same regardless of what the software is. It's just getting familiar with the layout of the uh, of the program and where they uh, and how things are done. Like I know in Maya, the material management is a little bit different than Max. The way that you assign materials to uh, objects is different than the way you do it here in Max. Um, I don't think they've got a GUI like this here in Maya that you can sort of use, and I really like that about Max. I, I like the interface, it's really nice and clean and easy to use, but it still has a lot of hidden power as well. So don't think because uh, it just it doesn't have a button that you can't do it because there's all this other stuff behind the scenes and sub-menus that you can do in Max. Uh, that and the fact too that Max has a very good plugin scripting system, and people have written a lot of uh, plugins for Max. So that's uh, another advantage of using Max. You can usually find a plugin to do what you need to do uh, pretty easily. Uh, but you're right. If you know one three D piece of software, you can as long as the job you're doing isn't too demanding, you may be able to bluff your way through it. Sniper's asking. Uh, yeah, Cinema Four D is a three D program. Sniper. Yeah. Uh, the sniper is just asking if Cinema 4D could be used for modeling. Yep, it's it's like Max and like Maya and like Blender. It's a full-on 3D program. I used to use it when I was doing um, when I used to do a lot of work in commercial work, like for commercials on TV. I used to use it for video titling quite a bit. So to do the um, the animated titles that you see uh, at the bottom of uh, TV screens and stuff. Um, but it's used a lot. It used to be used a lot there. Yeah, Legmog is saying, yep, it's uh, he's making a full-blown 3D animated pilot episode entirely in Cinema 4D, yep. Yeah, and it's a great piece of software, you know. Uh, it's the only, the only other, in my list of the way, uh, uh, what software I would use at the moment, Max is at the top, Cinema 4D would be second, 
and then it would be a toss-up between Blender and Maya. I'd probably go Blender and then Maya, simply because I'm, I, I, I prefer, I, I don't like Maya, it's just me. Uh, but a, a lot of guys do. It's a great piece of software. But yeah, Cinema 4D, if I didn't use Max, I'd use Cinema 4D. It's a great piece of software. I really liked using it when I used it years ago. Uh, and I only used it because I was forced to because the, uh, the, the visual effects studio insisted. So... Uh, Legmog is saying, yeah, uh, it gets sidelined a lot, um, Cinema 4D that is, because it's a specialist application for motion graphics, yeah, which is why the uh, visual effects company used it. Uh, it, it, it. I don't know if it still is very big, but it certainly uh, eight or so years ago, it was, a, it was huge. It was used a lot uh, in visual effects for titling work and all that sort of stuff. It, it's a nice interface too. It's very uh, clean again and easy to use but still very powerful behind the scenes if you need it. Um, so it's certainly worthwhile looking into if you're looking for a 3D program, that's for sure. But like I said, Blender is free now and Blender is a great piece of software, 3D software. Um, there's really no need to spend any money on a 3D program if you want to do 3D because Blender is free and it's good. It's just what designers in particular get used to things and they don't like change and I'm one of those people. Once I once I use some a piece of software a certain amount of well in my case it's been more than 15 years with Max. Uh, I really don't want to change because <laughs> I like the software. I'm used to the software. I've been trained in the software. Uh, we actually were trained on Max when I went to university so. Uh, like Mog says, I remember one dude on CG Society forums swearing blind that you could never use C4D for character work. I honestly don't know what he's on about, as I've made fully rigged animated characters left, right and centre. Yep, no, no, he's completely wrong. You, you can use any 3D program for character work, uh, including Cinema 4D is just as good as any other. You can use Max as well, because Max has cat built into it, character animation. Um, and of course Maya and uh, like I haven't used Blender but I'm sure Blender has uh, tools as well they all it'd be a foolish a company to release a piece of 3D software where you couldn't do character work that people wouldn't use it um, yeah although I'm not a character artist uh, I've known of quite a few in my time in different studios um, so yeah a 3D 3D software wouldn't wouldn't it wouldn't last if, if they couldn't do character work in it if people couldn't do any character work in it I used to use a, a, a program called um, Messiah Studio and I don't know if they're still around but they used to be great for doing character character only that's all they did it was just a, a program to do character animation and it, it specialised in it and it was really good but because I'm not a character artist uh, I don't tend to do a lot of work in uh, animating I did own a licence of it though because it was such a a unique and, and good piece of software so if I ever did need to do any character work I could uh, and it was called Messiah Studio I think at the time yeah it was very good uh, Sniper says uh, I'm trying to get decent with character animation um, well yeah it's a good skill to know uh, but like I said to you guys you don't ever want to <coughs> pardon me you don't want to um, be a master of everything, uh, sorry, a, a, a jack of all trades and a master of none. I, I, m my opinion for anyone wanting to get into the 3D industry and do 3D work is to pick something you like doing and you, you think you might be good at, so whether that's an animator or an environment artist or a texture artist uh, or a character artist and uh, practice and get good at that one thing. Uh, and then when, once you've sort of mastered that and, and you can do that well, then look at expanding into other areas. Um, a lot of people seem to think that oh, if I go to a studio and say, I can animate, I can do environment work, I can do hard surface modeling, I can do texturing, uh, I can do technical art, that they get they're more hireable. And they certainly are if they're good at the, all those things. But if you're only mediocre at, at them, uh, a studio is going to be more impressed by just an environment artist who's really good or just a texture artist who's really good or just an animator who's really good as opposed to this guy over here who says who says he can do all these different five things but doesn't can't do any of them really well you know 
because they have specialist people doing those jobs. They don't need you to do them all. They've got a character artist. They've got an environment artist. They've got a texture artist. They've got a technical artist. It's very rare that you'll have one person that does them all because they're all so complicated to do. Uh, Sniper says, tell that to the guy making a game for showcase of games. You're, you're an exception to the rule though. You're working for yourself, Sniper. That's, that's different, you know. Uh, I'm talking about if you're going for a job at a studio. Uh, as, as, a, as a person employed by themselves to do their own work, you have to wear many hats. That's, that's just the fact of, I'm the same. I mean, you, know, you guys know I sell my models online. So I'm a, I, I'm a hard surface modeler. I'm a, an environment artist because I have to do beauty renders. Um, I'm a marketing person because I need to post to social media and have to get my, my work out there. So yeah, when you're working for yourself, you have to wear a lot of different hats. That's yeah, different. That's different though. Uh, Sniper says, well, that's the name of, uh, what was the name of that? Uh, Messiah Studio. Um, I will look up. I'm, I'm curious now to whether they're still around because they were very good. I don't have the software installed uh, currently, but I do have a license. I can't, I can't type anything. Uh, M-E-S-S-I-A-H is how you would spell it, I'm pretty sure. M-E-S-S-I-A-H. Messiah Studio. Uh, it was just uh, an animation it was just animation software, so just very good at doing anima animation work. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I'm so used to having the keyboard here and uh, I can't type anything. <sighs> yes, so yeah, Messiah Studio. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still around, but it was great software. They had a, when I purchased a license for it, they were doing a promotion. So the license was incredibly cheap. It was, when I say cheap, it was only like $40 Australian. So it was very cheap, but in, really good at animation work if, you, if you're an animator. So yeah, if, you, uh, if, you, if you're working for yourself, you're making your own game, you're going to have to try your hand at all of them, I guess. But um, chances are you're not going to be great at all of them, <laughs> at least not initially anyway. It is still around, Sniper says. Oh, good to know. Yeah, the company, they're a nice group of guys that made the software and the software was really good. Yeah, do check it out if you're interested in doing animation work. I don't know what they're charging for it now, but uh, when I bought it, like I said, they had a, a sort of a special sale going, a, a viral marketing thing they were doing where you could buy it really cheap. And so I did. Uh, yeah, so for animation, it's great. It's a great piece of software. It really uh, intuitive to use and you can get really good results uh, with it. Um, but generally now, if I wanted to do animation, I'd probably do it in Max. Uh, uh, Megina Talia, uh, it's Messiah Studio, so M-E-S-S-I-A-H Studio. Uh, sorry, I can't type on screen because my keyboard has decided to, uh, to not work at the moment. And I, I don't want to uh, muck around in case my stream goes down. Um, yeah, so that's it. Sniper has just popped it into the uh, chat there. Thanks, Sniper. Uh, so, uh, Migena, that's the software there, if you're interested. It, it is good software. When I when I bought it, it was very good. I'm sure it's still good. It's all it does, animation, and it does it very well. Thanks for the links, uh, Sniper, as well, for popping that into chat. Project Messiah, that's the one. And uh, subscription is sixty-five dollars a year. Well, actually, when I when I, I because I purchased it years ago, you could put, buy it outright. But a subscription is seems to be the way of the world now. So uh, look it up if you're interested in doing animation work because it is very good. Oh, the link is for oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. <laughs> So this is Project Messiah, who make Messiah Studio, which is uh, just an animation. You, uh, all it does is animation work. No, oh, you can still buy it outright as well, if you want. But you can certainly subscribe if you're just doing a project. And uh, it was built to do animation, and it does it very well. It does it better than Maya, even. Uh, and that's coming from somebody who uh, has friends that are animators, uh, character animators. And even they say that this is better than anything they've ever used any other 3D software they've ever used. 
uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name to um, me, Jenna, because you guys that are regulars to my channel know I'm terrible with your usernames. Uh, says, I can't believe you said this name. Thank you for being one of the few people who say the whole thing. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, my pleasure. But like I said, my apologies if uh, I mispronounce it. I'm terrible with usernames. So it's not your username, it's just my mouth. <laughs> and you're quite welcome. It's good to see you in chat too. Thanks for being here. Sniper is going to be my keyboard. Thank you, Sniper. Uh, yeah, so if you are interested in doing animation work, um, projectmessiah.com. Uh, Sniper has popped a link in chat there if you're interested. Uh, check it out. It's great for animation work. That's all it does. So it's not it's not a 3D program. You can't make 3D stuff in it. It's just an animation. You, you import your model and you animate it. It doesn't have to be characters, though. You can animate anything. Uh, but do remember that. You can render in it. So you can render out stuff, but you can't make stuff. And it's very good, uh, very intuitive to use. And like I said, a lot of the guys that I've worked with who are character animators love this software, which is why I bought it. Not that I'm a character animator, but I like to play around with all different sorts of software and check it out. Mi Jenna Talia. Mi Jenna Talia. You are terrible. Yes, I understand. <laughs> You're lucky that we're a uh, 18 plus stream. <laughs> you guys and your usernames. <laughs> well, Sick Nerd Baller was in the chat yesterday. I mean, he's got an interesting username there as well. So, Mi Genitalia. There we go. <laughs> that's okay. Like I said, we're a mature channel, so that's fine. Twitch shouldn't ban me. TwitchCon is soon too, actually, isn't it? Uh, it's this month, I think. Not that I'm going, I'm just saying. I'll remember your username, uh, Magenitalia. <laughs> you guys and girls. Uh... You guys choose these names so that streamers have to say them, don't you? I know you do. I know you do. That's why you choose them. Just to get us Twitch guys to say them. Um, Sniper says, I'm not sure where... I'm not so sure where very... I'm not so sure we're very mature to... You're saying you're not so sure that we're very mature? No, we're probably not. But we have a mature channel on Twitch, so it's it, when when you enter my channel, it says uh, you know it's an adult channel. So uh, I, I, I was uh, when I actually set my Twitch channel up, I was not sure whether I should do that because you guys know I'm on Twitch to encourage you to do 3D, and uh, I didn't want to discourage younger guys like younger people from getting into 3D. Uh, so I thought long and hard about making it a mature channel, uh, but then I thought to myself. If you're a 15 year old or 14 year old and you see that little pop up say this is a mature channel and you all you got to do is click OK to get into it anyway. So chances are they're going to lie and come in regardless of their age, even though, I've, you know, it, it is stated that you should be mature to watch my channel. Uh, so it, odds are they're going to click on it anyway. Um, so, yeah, but it, it just helps me uh, with regard to Twitch because it allows us to talk about more adult things without worrying about um, Twitch getting annoyed because I'm not listed as a mature channel. My genitalia says it's funny when they say it fast and then catch themselves. I didn't I didn't pick it up until you until you typed it in like that. Um, yeah. So it was just basically to protect um, to protect us and to protect the channel in case Twitch took offense to the fact that anything was said that shouldn't be. Because this is Twitch, you know what people are like. They troll all the time. I've had trolls on my chat all the time. Not all the time, but I've had trolls. Generally, they're just after a bit of fun, which is fine. <laughs> Sniper says, I'm glad you stopped cursing so much. <laughs> I've never cursed in my life. Oh, come on. You know I don't like cursing. I don't curse. You know, No, I don't. I don't curse at all. 
I try and be an adult who, with, who's clean. I don't. I keep it clean. I've got to try and keep it clean. I don't. Don't go there. <laughs> I don't swear. Not unless I'm really annoyed or something, or I kick. Yeah, and no, I generally I never swear. The lie. <laughs> Uh, my genitalia is asking how long have you been in the gaming industry uh, I'm not in the gaming industry anymore I work in arts biz now architectural visualization um, I was working in the games industry about probably about eight years ago yeah so I went from working in the games industry then I worked in the film industry and now I work in arts biz so yeah but when I was working in the games industry um, I was working in it for about six years. I decided to leave because I didn't like the uh, the deadlines. It was too much. They work you really hard in the game industry. They really do. Uh, they have to because, you know, the publishers are demanding a game and you only get so much time to work on it. So they expect long hours. And that's fair enough. I don't mind working hard. I work hard where I work now in Archbiz, but um, I didn't like the uh, the demand of having to do it and then no reward for doing it, if that makes sense. They didn't appreciate the fact that you worked an 80-hour week. They just thought that's what you got to do if you want to work in our industry. And after six years, I said to myself, well, you know what? I don't think I want to work in your industry anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't want to discourage you guys that do want to work in games because I know you like uh, people on Twitch are into games and that's that's cool. And it depends on the studio too. I don't want to tar them all with the same, um, you know, brush. Depending on the studio you work for, there are good ones. There are. They're not all bad. Um, but they still do demand long hours, so. Yeah, so that's uh, why I decided to leave. Um, basically because I didn't, didn't feel appreciated and I felt overworked. Like I said, I don't mind being challenged and worked hard as long as I'm appreciated for doing it which I didn't feel I was at the studio I was working at back then but it was a lot of fun I got to meet a lot of really nice people really interesting uh, creative people from different areas inside the studio from you know animators to character artists to um, sound engineers to to all sorts of different uh, people and it was a lot of fun for sure if I was to say that's if there's one thing I miss about not working in games, it's that uh, exposure to a whole variety of different industries of people that do different things. In arch biz, you tend to be surrounded by creative directors, uh, art directors, uh, 3D artists. That's pretty much it. They don't tend to have animators. They certainly don't have technical artists. They don't have character artists. So you don't you're not exposed to as a, a, as broad a, a range of um creative disciplines as when you work in games or when you work in film so yeah if I miss anything about games it's the fact that I used to interact with a lot of different people that did different types of things uh, my, gen my genitalia says animation is my nightmare I hate keyframe animation and too broke for mocap <laughs> yeah yeah keyframe can be painful I admit I'm not an animator but I have done some I've messed around at animation I've, I've spoken to my friends and I've watched them work in animation. Yeah, keyframing is always a pain, for sure. And motion capture, even with motion capture, you generally got to clean it up anyway. So you're going to be you're going to be going through keyframes one way or the other, even with motion capture, to clean it. So <laughs> it's just like UV mapping if you're a 3D artist. You can't get away from it. It's got to be done. It's one of those things everybody hates, but everybody's got to do. <laughs> Viper the Sniper, sup? Um, what's up with you, Viper the Sniper? I like the username, actually, Viper the Sniper. <laughs> yeah, so we've just been talking about the different industries I've worked in. You know, before I got into 3D, guys, I used to be a chef. So uh, I like to try a few different things. I've done a few different things in my life. So, yeah, I was a, a qualified chef. I did the four-year apprenticeship to become a chef. Did that for about a year and decided I didn't want to do it anymore and then uh, went into advertising, uh, into design, graphic design. And then from graphic design, I went back to university and studied programming. Uh, then I went into web development and now I'm in 3D and I have been for about 15 years. So 
Sniper says, uh, I'm working on mocap add-on for Blender. It's tough going. I'm sure it is. Yeah. So you're actually creating an add-on for Blender Sniper. That's, that's pretty impressive. Very impressive. It's always good to release those sort of things uh, if you can create them. I did one for Max, uh, the tutorial, and I created a plugin for Max that I gave away. Well, I still give away on my website on my blog. So if you take animated plants from Speedtree and want to render them in view, but have them still animated, I created a plugin in Max to do that. So yeah, it's a good thing to do if you, if you can. Uh, yeah, no, I don't like working on jobs where I have to put in long hours. I don't mind though, because I love what I do. Uh, 3D has been my life for, for 15 years. And it's taken a few different career choices or different jobs in my career to, to for me to decide exactly what I do enjoy doing. <clears throat> and 3D is certainly something I really enjoy. So I don't mind working long hours. I do work long hours now. Just ask Sniper. Like uh, I had to take a week off streaming a, about a month ago because the studio had just been incredibly busy. Like normally I stream on a Monday, Tuesday and a Wednesday and I have to, I've had to cut back Wednesdays and only do Monday, Tuesday because I've had so much work on at the studio. So I don't mind working long hours. That's that's not a problem. No, I don't mind that. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, I need to for some animations I need. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're creating it because you need it. Okay. Well, it can be good PR for you though after you've created it to give it away. If you decide to give it away. You might decide you want to sell it. I don't know. But certainly if you give it away, you'll get a lot of PR. I got a huge amount of PR out of that um, plugin I created for Max a few years ago. So uh, when you come, when it comes time, maybe when it gets closer to you releasing your game that you're making, uh, either giving it away could be a good way to generate some PR for it. Okay, you can bear that in mind. People love free stuff. Uh, they do, trust me. They love free stuff. No, who doesn't love free stuff? Uh, so they'll snap it up and uh, they'll carry that story on a lot of different websites and that'll give you good PR for your game. And they, that could be something for you guys that are making games that haven't created something. But creating something that you can give away for free to drum up publicity for the game is a really good way to go. It doesn't have to be a plug-in or an add-on for a 3D program. It could be something else, but giving something away as a promo for when you're releasing your game is a great way to go. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, if I can get it to that point, I will release it for free. Well, cool, do, because it'll be, like I said, it's good PR for the game. It'll help to, to get your name out there. It'll also help... It, 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 marketing 101, people feel an obligation when they get something for free. So if you give something away for free, people feel obligated then to you. They, they feel grateful to you. So it, it, subconsciously, they feel obligated to you. So... A sniper says, especially when it's for Blender, for sure, because Blender is, like I said, it's a free 3D program, so it has a large install base, I'm sure. I, I, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's large. Um, so it would be really worthwhile giving it away if, if, if you get it to a stage where you think uh, it's worth giving away, for sure. But remember, too, if you're giving it away, it doesn't have to be perfect. People will put up with um, certain bugs and things if it's free. If they're paying for it, they won't. But if it's free, they certainly will. They're willing to forgive a lot for something they get for free. Hey, you guys are watching me on Twitch. That says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> You're willing to forgive a lot for something that's free. Uh, Magenitalia says, do I use Blender? No, uh, Sniper does. Sniper uses Blender, yeah. I use Max. 3D Studio Max for me. But Sniper uses Blender. Uh, Sniper says, I just need to make sure I can support it also. Yeah, well, that's true. I still get emails from people about my plugin. I still have to uh, reply to them and try and help them. And, I, you know, I want to because I made the plugin. It's my responsibility to help them any way I can if I have to, if, if I can. Um, for sure, yeah. In fact, I still get emails from people about uh, a program I created uh, 10 years ago for the Wacom tablet. 
if you have a Wacom tablet, um, they, they they changed the uh, the driver for it where it, you couldn't use multi monitors. And I, I created a plugin, uh, I created a program in for Windows that could enable that again because uh, yeah, in their wisdom, Wacom decided to disable it for older tablets. And I didn't think that was very fair, so I created a, an executable that plugged into their driver so that you could use multiple monitors. And I still get emails from people about that. And that was 10 years ago. Uh, and I still have to answer them, so well, I still do. Because um, people appreciate it. You know, people email me saying, I love the, you know, the program you created to help me use my Wacom. I, after the, they decided that they weren't going to support my tablet anymore, it still lets me use my old hardware. Uh, so that, I always get a buzz out of that. Yeah, you know, I created it because I was pissed off. I had an older tablet. Um, Wacom changed the driver and wouldn't let me use multi-monitors. I didn't want to buy a new Wacom tablet because my, my, my Wacom at the time was perfectly fine. So I created this program to enable it again. Uh, Wacom were okay with it. Actually, I pub published it on their forum, on the Wacom forum, so they were okay with it. You know, they, they weren't narky at me or anything. Uh, I actually don't have that tablet anymore, so I don't run that software, but people obviously still do because I still get emails about it. Uh, I have two different tablets now. They're still Wacom, but they're newer ones. I have a uh, 6 by 9 inch and a, I think it's a 5 by 4 inch. So the large one is good for illustration work or painting sort of work in Photoshop, and the small one is good for more, uh, in, uh, more pin, pinpointed sort of work. For my texture painting, I use the smaller one. If I'm doing any sort of photo montage work, I'll use the larger one. Uh, Magenta is asking, do you write code? I, yes, I do. I can. I have. I'm pro I, I studied uh, at university in um, design and programming. So it was part of my university uh, degree. They taught us how to, how to code. So I do, I can. I, I've worked as a technical artist before as well. Like in the games industry, I was an environment artist and a technical artist. Um, so yeah, I had to learn how to pro how to program when I was doing technical art. And that's why I use Max. I, I, I created the plugin in Max Script for Max. Um, when I was doing web development, I used to use uh, programming then as well for that work. So yeah, I don't do much as much anymore, but. I can, and I have, and I do occasionally. 3D, 3D is my bread and butter now though. That's really what I want to uh, concentrate on, what I have been concentrating on. <laughs> yeah, you're saying I better use Python or we'll go to war. Um, I like Python. Uh, I've mucked around with it, but I haven't created anything in it. It is great, and it's used a lot now. In the, uh, in the 3D industry, it's... It's integrated into a lot of software. Python is sort of like, as a scripting language, is the be all now for um, for integration in studios. So I love Python. I haven't created anything in it, but it's something I've played around with and I'd like to look further into. Uh, it's really nice to see Python getting some love. Yeah, no, it is. Python was, has been around for donkey's years, as you probably know. But recently it's become a lot more popular than it ever was before. For sure. And like I said, a lot of uh, design studios, uh, VFX companies, uh, cinema, games, studios use Python to integrate their pipeline with uh, 3D stuff. Oh, Sniper says Blender is Python. I didn't know that. I had no idea about that, actually. That's really cool. Blender is Python. That, that is incredibly cool. Yeah, really cool. I had no idea. Well, it just goes to show you what you can achieve in Python. That's incredible. Like I said, it's something I've got to get back into. I want to look into again. Um, where are we? I actually might end the day here, I think, guys. I, um, I need to go and change, go to the computer store and buy this new fan for my machine so this rattle can stop. Um, and I've got to work out what's going on with my keyboard. I may have to get a powered hub while I'm out and about, I think. Um, I do want to thank you guys very much for hanging out and for watching and you guys for popping into chat as well. It's been a lot of fun chatting with all with you guys. Uh, do remember though, uh, I stream every Monday, Tuesday, usually Wednesday, but just not at the moment. 
at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the US, um, which is about 1 a.m. in the UK. Uh, my schedule doesn't change. It's always 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. Uh, my genitalia is asking, when you are making structures, do you eyeball it or using numbers? Generally, I'll eyeball it, just depending on what it is. Um, in my work, we tend to use photogrammet. Well, I, I specialize in photogrammetry, and those sort of things need a precise measurement, so I don't tend to eyeball that. But with stuff like I'm making here, I tend to eyeball it. I have more fun doing it that way. Uh, so it just depends on what the project is at the time I'm, and what I'm working on. Um, yes, yeah, so I do remember, guys, though. Cool, you're always welcome, a genitalia. You pop in any time. Do remember, too, if you, if you want to remind us through Twitch, you can follow my Twitch channel at PhilDoes3D. I always post to my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D uh, when I go live, um, so you can follow me there. But my schedule, like I said, doesn't change every Monday and Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. Um, thank you guys very much for watching and for hanging out with me and for chatting away. It's been a lot of fun. It was good to see you, Viper the Sniper, as well. Um, I will be back in again on Monday next week. Um, so you guys have a great weekend. Probably end up watching another movie, I think. Yep. I will be back on Monday next week. You guys have a great weekend. Again, thank you very much, guys, for hanging out and for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys hopefully next week. See you guys.